Lords, good day ladies, my name is William Shakespeare and I have written this play which you are all about to see. It goes by the title of The Mating of the Shrew. It's a documentary about very small animal husbandry. Uh, now I have not seen any of the rehearsals, I just, just merely hand the script over to the actors and let them take care of it. They told me they made some very minor changes, but the uh, the essence should still be there. So uh, it shall begin in a few minutes' time, and I hope that us enjoy it. Since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua, nursery of arts, I am arrived from fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy. And by my mother's love and leave am armed with her good will and thy oh. good company, my trusty servant, well approved in all. Here, let us breathe and happily institute a course of learning and ingenious studies. You care not, O gentle master mine, I am in all affected as thyself. Glad that you thus continue your resolve to suffer the sweets of sweet philosophy. Only, good master, while we do admire this virtue and this moral discipline, <laughs> let us be no stoics, nor no stocks, I pray. Walk logic with acquaintance that you have, and practice rhetoric in your common talk. Music and posy used to quicken you. No profit grows where is no pleasure attained. Grammar sees, Tronio, well dost thou advise. But stay a while. What company is this? Master, some show to welcome us to town. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, importunity yeah! no further. By how I am firmly resolved, you know that is not to bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the eldest. If either of you both love Katerina, because I know you well and love you well, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. To court her, rather, for she's too rough for me. There, there, Hortensia, will you any wife? I pray you, sir, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Mates, maid? How mean you that? No mates for you, unless you're of a gentle and milder mold. In faith, sir, you shall never need to fear. I whiz, it is not halfway to her heart. But if it were, doubt not her care should me to comb your noddle with a three-legged stool and paint your face and use you like a fool! From all such devils, good lord, deliver us. And from me too, good lord. <laughs> Gentlemen, may it soon be as I have said. Bianca, get you in. And let this not displease thee, my dear girl, for I shall love thee nevertheless, good Bianca. A pretty Pete! It is best put finger in the eye if she knew why. Sister, content you in my discontent. <laughs> Sir, to your pleasure humbly I subscribe. My books and rapier shall be my company, on them to talk and practice by myself. Get thee in, Bianca. And for I know she delighteth in music, swordsmanship, and poetry, schoolmasters will I keep within my house to train her in her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Senor Gremio, know of any such, prefer them hither, for to good men I shall be kind and liberal in the good bringing up of my children. Of course. And so, farewell. Uh, Katerina, you may stay, for I have more to commune with Bianca. Why? And I trust I may go too, may I not? What? Shall I be appointed hours as a blight? I know what, not what to take and what to leave? Ha! Ha! You may go to the devil's dam. Her gifts are so good, his not will hold her. Our cake's dough on both sides. Farewell. Senor Gremio, but a word I pray? Though the nature of our quarrel never yet brooks parley, know now, upon advice it toucheth us both that we may yet again have access to our fair mistress and be happy rivals in Bianca's love to labor and effect one thing specially. Now what's that, I pray? Mary, sir, to get a husband for her sister. A husband? A devil? I say a husband. A devil! A husband! A devil! A husband! A devil! Knowest thou, Hortensio, though her father be very rich, any man wouldst be so very a fool. 
to be married to hell? Tush, Gremio! Though it pass your patience and mine to endure her loud alarums, why, man, there be good fellows in this world, and man could light on them, would take her with all her faults and money enough. When I had given him the best horse in Padua to begin his wooing that would finally woo, -woo, -woo, -woo her, wet her, bait her, and rid this house of her! Come on! <laughs> Tell me, sir, I pray, is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? Oh, Tronyo, till I found it to be true, I never thought it possible or likely. But see, while idly I stood looking on, I found the effect of love in idleness, and now in plainness do confess to thee. Tronyo, I burn, I pine, I perish, Tronyo, if I achieve not this young modest girl. Counsel me, oh. Tronyo, for I know thou canst. Assist me, Tronyo, for I know thou wilt. Master, you look so longly on the maiden. Perhaps you mark not what's the pith of all. Oh, yes. I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter of Agnor had, that made great Jove to humble him to her hand, when with his knees he kissed the Cretan strand. Saw you no more? Marked you not how her sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal ears might hardly endure the din? Tranio, I saw her coral lips to move, and with her breath she did perfume the air. Sacred and sweet was all I saw in her. Nathan, <coughs> tis time to wake him from his trance. I pray, awake, sir. If you love the maid, bend thoughts and wits to achieve her. Thus it stands. Her eldest sister is so cursed and shrewd that till the father rid his hands of her. Master, your love must live a maid at home. Ah! Tronio, what a cruel father's he! But art thou not advised? He took some care to get her cunning schoolmasters to instruct her. I Mary, am I, sir, and now tis plotting. I have it, Tronyo. Master, from my hand, both arm engines meet and jump in one. Tell me thine first. You shall be a fencing master and undertake the teaching of the maid. That's your device. It is. Can it be done? Not possible. <laughs> For who shall bear your part? And here in Padua will be Vincenzia's son. Basta. Content thee, for I have it full. We have not yet been seen in any house, nor can we lie distinguished by our faces for man or master. Then it follows thus. Thou shalt be master, Tronio, in my stead. I shall some other be, some Neapolitan or Florentine or meaner man of Pisa. Uncase thee, take my colored hat and cloak. Uh, when Biondello comes, he waits on thee, but I will charm him first to keep his tongue. Your mother charged me at our parting. Be serviceable to my son, quoth she. Oh, though I think twas in another sense. <laughs> I am glad to be Lucenzio, because so well I love Lucenzio. Oh, Tranio, be so, because Lucenzio oh. loves! <laughs> <laughs> and let me be a slave to achieve that maid, whose sudden sight hath thralled my wounded eye. Ha, 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 ha.